that's the hardest thing for people to accept, is that whatever it takes, the end justifies the means. Whatever it takes to get an agenda through, the big boys do it. The big boys do it. We've had horrendous wars in the past, like Vietnam. The tapes are up there now. They're available uh, with McNamara and so on, uh, talking to the, the captains of the Tonkin Bay, uh, pretty well bullying them into trying to say that there were torpedoes fired at them. And yet the Admiral was saying, well, it's, you can't really tell in this kind of weather. You get so many fake readings. Well, they wanted the war. Yeah, they really do kill thousands or millions of people if they need to, to get something done. That's that's why it works so well with them. We, we see ordinary people who are not psychopaths can't think that way. It'd be a, too abhorrent to you. And because there are people who do think that way, uh, you, 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 will, you will make excuses for them. You will actually make excuses for them if there are people in high places of power. Because you can't relate to a human being doing these things. That's why they always get away with it. That's why they always will. We're turning into a, a vast police state with a planned economy, a planned population size for the future. This doesn't all come at once. It's, it's, it's gradual, 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 but through little laws, little laws, little laws, until you've got so many laws in the books, it's actually working. And we adapt, as Darwin said, we adapt to everything very quickly, adapt or die. And if you're all adapting at the same time, then it's no big deal, no matter what you're going through. It's quite simple. You understand, a planned society means you must plan the events to bring in the society you want. If you let it to chance, there's a, there's a very slim chance it would work out in your direction. You can't leave anything to chance at the top for power. It doesn't work that way. You know, here's some depopulation quotes, and it's from the Sovereign Independent, uh, 29th uh, of uh, this, uh, October last year, I think it was. I'll put this link up too, but it says, it says, society has no business to permit, permit degenerates to reproduce their kind. That was Theodore Roosevelt who said that. The wonderful Theodore Roosevelt. Here's another article, another part here. Malthus has been vindicated. Reality is finally catching up with Malthus. The third world is overpopulated. It's an economic mess. And there's no way they can get out of this with the fast-growing population. Our philosophy is back to the village. And that was Dr. Arnie Schiotz, World Wildlife Fund Director of Conservation, which he said in 1984. A total world population of 250 to 300 million people, which is a 95% decline from present levels, would be ideal. That was Ted Turner. Turner Enterprises, the big media moguls. The guys that tell you what your points of view should be. There was an interview with Audubon magazine, he said that. There's a single theme behind all our work. Very important way of saying it, this, because it's true. In regards to the organizations you're listening to, it's all the same mantra. There is a single theme behind all our work. We must reduce population levels. Either governments do it our way through nice clean methods, or they will get the kinds of mess that we have in El Salvador or in Iran or in Beirut. Population is a political problem. Once population is out of control, it requires authoritarian government, even fascism, to reduce it. Our program in El Salvador didn't work. The infrastructure was not there to support it. There were just too many goddamn people. To really reduce populations quickly, you have to pull all the males into the fighting. You get wars going. And you have to kill significant numbers of fertile age females. That's what you do in war too. You do that for mainly from the air and so on. Or kill zones as they like to call them. The quickest way to reduce population is through famine like in Africa or through disease like the Black Death. That was said by Thomas Ferguson, State Department Office of Population Affairs. Now do you think these, these people um, are just, uh, they're just woken up out of their sleep and they're, and they're talking in a dream to you. Do you really think that's what it is? So you, you will make excuses for what you hear. And you should be very, very afraid when these people are in top positions in your governments, as they are in the U.S. 
as guys like Holdren and all the rest of them behind him are in charge of the U.S. government. And in Britain, too, the Optimum Population Trust and all these unelected organizations sitting on government boards. You better, you better start really taking it seriously because they are taking it seriously. And then, of course, the big con with global warming came from the, the Club of Rome. They call themselves the premier think tank for the United Nations. And they're really just, uh, the, the guys there also belongs to other organizations such as the, the Royal Institute for International Affairs. And searching for a new enemy to unite us, we came up with the idea that pollution, the threat of global warming, water shortages, famine and the like would fit the bill. But in designing them as the enemy, we fall into the trap of mistaking symptoms for causes. All these dangers are caused by human intervention, and it's only through changed attitudes and behaviors that they can be overcome. The real enemy, then, is humanity itself. But you see, it's not just any humanity. It's, it's the ones they don't need for their new system. That was by Ally Exactor, Alexander King and Bertrand Schneiders, who were the founders and secretary, respectively, of the Club of Rome. And they wrote that in their book, uh, The First Global Revolution, in pages 104 to 105, and uh, that was published in 1991. However, they came up with the idea in the 1970s. That's why they changed, by the way, the United Nations from screaming about the coming ice age to the coming warming age. Uh, there's another article, another saying here, cancer is an uncontrolled multiplication of cells. The population explosion is an uncontrolled multiplication of people. We must shift our efforts from the treatment of the symptoms to the cutting out of the cancer. The operation will demand many apparently brutal and heartless decisions. Stanford professor Paul Ehrlich, that's the guy who co-authored the book Ecoscience with John Holdren, who's now helping to run the U.S. government in scientific affairs. And that was, Ehrlich wrote that in the population bomb. And then, of course, uh, Jacques Cousteau, the guy who loved fish, you know, he's a fishy character. Interesting character, too, because uh, Jacques Cousteau, his other brother, uh, was in the Vichy France Nazi movement. He ran the Nazi newspaper during World War II, because really they're all Nazis, these people, in, in a sense. It doesn't matter what you call them. They're elitist uh, supremacists, you might call them. That's what they are, elitist uh, intellectual supremacists that believe they have the right to rule the rest. And he said this, in order to stabilize world population, we must eliminate 350,000 people per day. It's a horrible thing to say, but it's just as bad not to say it. He said that in a, a news a magazine interview. And it goes on and on and on. I believe that human overpopulation is a fundamental problem on Earth today, and we humans have become a disease. The human pox, that's Dave Foreman of the Sierra Club and co-founder of Earth First. We're not talking about little little charities here that walk about with tin cans and rent a basement somewhere. It's hard to get the, the impact of this out to the general public because they're caught up in so much hype and daily hysteria from the media, which is intended to keep you that way, off balance, that you don't think straight and you can't see the real enemy coming towards you. Instead, you get distracted. If you're, if you're a general standing on a hill and you're overseeing a battle, you can't be diverted by your casualties over here or over there or way over in the far corner. You've got to see the immediate threat so that you can win the war. We'll be back with more after this break. 